recorded na ba? Okay, so yan, recording na tayo. So let's talk about chapter 4. It is about the three-dimensional structure of proteins. No? Wala akong camera. Okay. So last time we were able to discuss saan gawa yung protein. Okay, saan ba gawa yung protein? Sa individual amino acid sequence natin. So generally we have 20 amino acids no? na common. Okay. And some of them are essential, some of them are hindi. No? So when you say essential amino acids, these are amino acids that we have to uh, get from our food sources. No? So ano yung mga amino acids na yun? Yun, yun yung WH, uh, T, M, I, L, K, F, V, R. No? So those are the amino acids that we have to derive from our diet. No? So kaya kailangan natin kumain ng karne. And kailangan din natin kumain ng gulay no? because those food products will give us the essential amino acids. No? Okay? But primarily, the source of proteins talaga or source ng amino acid natin ay karne. No? So yan yung isang case. No? That's why uh, sasabihin namin na uh, hindi naman kailangan maging uh, vegan. No? Okay lang vegetarian pero not so vegan. No, kailangan mo pa rin ng karne sa life. No? Especially yung mga white meat. No? Such as yung sa baboy. Ay hindi, red meat sa baboy. Yung mga white meat such as yung sa isda and sa manok. No? So yun yung mga healthy. Okay. So also in our last chapter, we discussed that for each amino acid, they can exhibit different properties. No? There are amino acids that can do, uh, that can... Ano, that can mix well with water, so hydro, uh, hydrophilic sila. And there are amino acids that do not mix with water, sila yung mga hydrophobic amino acids. No? And imagine nyo yung ating protein, maraming ganong parts. No? May mga parts na hydrophilic and then may parts na hydrophobic. So what happens is that yung ating individual amino acid, yung characteristic nila, pag pinagsama-sama natin yung sa protein, they do... Uh, different conformations no so may conformation for the ano for the hydrophilic part then may conformation for the hydrophobic part so kumbaga yung ating protein pag isang buo na natin siya tin tinitignan nag-oorient sila into various ways so that they will maximize their hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity that's why we have the three dimensional structure of the protein kaya 3D yung shape ng ating protein. So let's have an overview first. No? So the spatial arrangement of your atoms in a protein is called the conformation. Ayun yung sinabi ko kanina. And the conformation can be determined by the type of uh, or by the characteristic of your amino acid. No? So pwede mong pwede maging ano yan? Pwede mag ibang conformation niya depending on uh, its characteristic, kung siya ay hydrophobic or hydrophilic. No? Okay? The possible conformations of a protein include any structural change that can be achieved without breaking covalent bonds. So, ibig sabihin, our protein can rotate. No? Pwede siya umikot-ikot. However, we should keep in mind that their movement, their rotation, hindi dapat maputol yung bonds as they do so. Okay. So, yun. so gumagalaw yung ating protein no? in order to maximize its interactions. And as it moves, yung ating mga bonds na to twist then. Okay. But not in a sense na napuputol yung bonds no. Okay. So nag ano lang, nag umiikot-ikot lang. Nag to twist lang. Okay. So the the conformation of protein is stabilized by weak interactions. So when you say weak interactions, so we are pertaining to the hydrophilicity and the hydrophobicity uh, interactions. No? Okay? And yun yung mga nag-predominate nag sa ating structure ng protein. No? Okay? So, yan. so, ano ba yung mga iba't ibang uri ng structure ng proteins natin? So, there are four categories when we characterize the structure of our protein. So, apat yan. We have the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, and the quaternary structure of the protein. 
So let's talk about the primary structure of the protein first. When we say primary structure, ito yung pinaka basic unit sa overall structure ng amino uh, ng ating protein. Okay? So the primary structure of protein is composed of the amino acids or the peptide bonds. We knew last time that our peptide bonds, they have this partial double bond character. So in this plane, they are linear. No? So linear itong partial double bond character natin. So kumbaga parang ito ay isang strand lang na straight. No? Okay? So isang straight na strand lang yan. However, the R groups, sila yung mga pwede umikot-ikot around that uh, strand. No? So imagine yung spaghetti yan na straight. Then yung mga R groups, sila yung pwede mag-twist-twist around that. No? Okay? Because of the single bonds around them. No? So sila yung mga pwede mag-twist. No? Yung ating R groups. So yan. So that is the primary structure of the protein. So again, primary structure of protein pertains to the amino acid sequence. So tinitignan niyan kung ano yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng amino acid from N-terminal to the C-terminal. So, usually straight lang yan because of the peptide bonds. However, yung bond to the R group ay single bond lang. So, yun yung mga pwede mag-flip-flip na. No? Yung mga single bonds. So, pwedeng minsan nakapataas, minsan nakapababa, so on so forth. Usually alternating sila. So, that's the primary protein structure. Amino acid lang. Okay? So, ngayon naman, let's talk about the secondary protein structure. So, mag-zoom out na tayo. So, imagine nyo yung protein, parang earth. No? Pag zoom in nyo yan, yung primary structure ng earth, let's say, tayo, ng mga tao. I-zoom out natin yan. Okay, so mag-zoom out tayo from the sequence. We will get the, um, we will get these two conformations, the alpha and the beta conformation. Ayun yung secondary protein structure natin. So again, Primary amino acid sequence for the secondary, that's the alpha and the beta conformation. Okay? So, yan. So, dalawa lang sila. O, uli. Pag primary amino acid sequence, pag secondary, it could either be alpha or beta uh, conformation. Okay? So, pag-usapan natin yung dalawang yan, alpha and beta conformation. So, for the alpha helix, ang itsura niyan is that, di ba, we have the strand of protein. No? So, parang naka-straight line niyan. However, ang ating R groups, they are twisted around a certain axis. No? So, tignan niyo ito. Zoom in natin. Uh, suppose ito yung ating ano, peptide bond. So, naka-straight yan. Pero yung ating R groups, they are twisted around an imaginary axis. So if the our ayan so itong itong nasa circle na to ito yung ating peptide bonds no naka straight yan although nakapa-twist pa paikot lang okay our R groups are pointed outwards no so kapag ganun yung itsura ng ating amino acids no pag nag-zoom out tayo makikita natin na naka pa ikot sila around an imaginary axis we call that the alpha helix okay so, ano sabi dito? So, in our alpha helix, the polypeptide is wound around the imaginary axis. So, basically, that means nakapaikot sila sa ating imaginary axis of rotation. So, ganito yung itsura nun. Okay. So, yan. So, ito, itong kulay gray sa gitna, yan yung ating peptide bonds. Yung purple, yun yung mga R groups pointing outwards no sa imaginary axis and depending on the rotation of your of your helix you can have a left-handed helix or a right-handed helix now okay so yeah so we can have left-handed helix or right-handed helix depending sa twist no ng ating amino acid sequence although din na natin yan i-cover masyado okay Okay. So, usually, an idealized alpha helix has 3.6 uh, 
amino acids per turn. So, ibig sabihin sa isang flip niyan, kunwari sa ito isang turn to, isang 360 degrees, there's around 3.6 amino acids in there, no? Okay, so, for this three, ano, for this turn, may 3.6 amino acid included dyan. So, from that idea, basta alam natin yung length ng ating protein, pwede natin malaman how many amino acid sequence yung meron tayo doon. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, yan yung isang technique na ginagamit ng ating mga biotechnologists, no? molecular biologists, para malaman kung ilang amino acid sequence yung pwede makuha from a certain length of protein. No? So, yan. That is if straight lang yung ating protein. Okay, nakapahilix lang siya. Okay, so again, pag alpha helix, ano meron sa ating structure? Ito yung ating peptide bonds. It is wound around an imaginary axis. And the R groups are pointing away from that imaginary axis. Its turn could either be a left-handed or right-handed helix. No? Kapag left-handed helix, ang rotation niya ay clockwise. And kapag right-handed yan, ang rotation niya ay counterclockwise. No? So imagine nyo dalawang kamay nyo. If, 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 if ganun nyo pa loob yung ano, left hand nyo. So, yun yung rotation ng uh, left-handed helix. Pag right-handed helix naman, ipaloob nyo yung mga daliri nyo. Yun yung rotation ng right-handed helix. Okay? So, although hindi na natin alamin yung ano, differences between the two. What we know is that dalawa yung pwede yung confirmation. Alpha na left-handed or alpha na right-handed. Okay, and for each turn, there is around 3.6 amino acid. No? And generally, the height of the turn is uh, 5.4 angstrom. Okay, so ganun lang. Teka lang. Adjust ko lang tong screen ko. Okay. So, commonly, um, maraming alpha helix na amino acid, although there are some amino acids that do not form stable alpha helices. No? So, depending on the type of the amino acid na nandoon, pwedeng hindi alpha helix ang ma-form nila. So, ano yung mga, ano, mga examples niyan? One example would be the proline. Okay? So, remember yung proline, yung ating R group, bumabalik siya sa N group na. No? Nakadugtong siya sa N group na. No? So ibig sabihin kapag ilalagay mo sa alpha helix mo, medyo unstable yung uh, imaginary axis niya doon. So hindi siya mag-conform very well sa ating alpha helix na. No? That's why we have to use the other type of the conformation na. No? So yan. Okay. Ay, more kwento lang yan. So, kunwari, ganun nga, yung ating amino acid, because of its structure, hindi siya best for the alpha helix, then we can use the beta conformation of our amino acid. No? So, ano itsura ng beta conformation? Sa so, beta conformation, ito ay parang sheets, no? para silang paper. Okay? So, sabi dito, in the beta conformation, the backbone of the polypeptide chain is extended into a zigzag rather than helical structure. So, instead na nakahelix tayo, nakatwist around an imaginary axis, what happens here for beta conformation is that yung ating amino acid sequence, they are patterned in a zigzag motion. Okay? So, pakita natin yan dito. So, suppose this is our starting amino acid. Okay. So, yan. Nagzizigzag sila, no? As, as, uh, when I say zigzag, yan parang alternating sila dito. So, yan. So, you have, the, you have an amino acid sequence here and another amino acid sequence here and another amino acid sequence there. So, parang they are connected sa, ano, parang magkakatabilan sila. Okay. So you have three different three different rows of amino acid sequence. So as a result, they form flat sheets. No. Okay. So yeah. 
So our ano, our beta helix can uh, beta conformation pala, so hindi siya helix na. So our beta conformation has two versions then, no? We have the parallel and the anti-parallel. Okay. So ano difference nila? Sa anti-parallel, yung arrangement ng ating amino uh, amino acid sequence ay alternating. So for example, the amino acid sequence on the top is dito yung N terminal, andun yung C terminal sa kabila. So that's left to right yung sequence. Sa baba naman, opposite yung nangyari. So andito yung N terminal, andito yung C terminal. So right to left yung direction ng amino acid sequence natin. Okay? So that's for anti-parallel. The terminals are alternating. So suppose you have this N terminal here. For the next line, you have the C terminal naman. And then for the next, you have the N terminal again. So alternating lang sila ng pattern. And for parallel beta sheets naman, so lahat sila iisa yung direction ng amino acid sequence. So lahat ng nasa left, andun yung N terminal. Lahat ng nasa right, andun yung C terminal. Yan. So dugtong-dugtong sila papunta doon. Okay, so again, differentiate lang natin yung secondary structure ng protein. We have the alpha helix. No? Alpha helix is a conformation wherein your amino acids are uh, twisted around an imaginary axis wherein your R groups are pointing outwards. Okay, parang DNA sequence lang. No? Parang lang siyang structure ng DNA. Actually, ganito nga rin yun na. Okay, so yan. So yan, you have your alpha helix, your R groups are pointing outwards, and your uh, peptide bonds are integrated dito sa imaginary axis. Ibig sabihin na sila yung gumagawa ng imaginary axis, yung peptide bonds mo. While your R groups are pointed outwards. Okay. For the beta helix, uh, beta conformation sheets pala, Okay, for the beta conformation sheets, what happens here is that your amino acids are patterned in a zigzag motion. Okay, so yan, taas, baba, taas, baba. Yun yung zigzag, taas, baba, taas, baba. And then it could be alternating, uh, that's anti-parallel conformation, or pwede rin namang parallel conformation. So lahat, na, lahat sila iisa yung direction ng sequence nila. In the, our case, N-terminal is on the left. C terminal is on the right. No? So, E is on direction. Yan. Okay. Okay. So, beta turns are common in proteins. No? Especially, yung mga globular proteins. When you say globular proteins, sila yung mga pa-circle na proteins. No? Okay. So, suppose we have this... Um, we have this amino acid sequence. Beta turn, ibig sabihin... Di ba naka-sheet yun? Pwede yun mag-rotate around. No? Pwede siya pumaikot. So, suppose ito ay isang sheet, pwede siya mag-fold. Okay? Yun yung beta turn. Yung nag-fold yung ating sheets. No? Okay? And that is common when you have, for example, proline. No? When you have proline, sa inyong ano, amino acid sequence, sabi ko nga sa inyo, ang proline hindi siya good sa alpha helix because of its structure. So, pwede siya sa ano, Pwede siya sa beta. However, because our proline can isom, ano, it can isomerize, no? because may stereochem yan. So, as it flips around, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating beta turn. Okay. So, yung proline natin, pwede yan mag-reorient so that yung ating straight na papel ng beta sheet, pwede siya matiklop. No? Pwede tumiklop yung ating beta sheets. No? Okay. So, isa sa mga dahilan yan ay si proline. Okay. So, ayan. So, yan lang yung ano, dalawang types ng uh, amino acid structure natin. So, una, we have the primary structure with, which pertains to the individual amino acid sequence. The second one pertains to the overall look. No? Parang nag-zoom out ka lang onte. Okay. So, pag nag-zoom out tayo onte sa ating amino acid sequence, we can see different pictures. It could be helical 
or pwede rin namang beta sheets na. So kapag alpha helix, your peptide bonds are wound around an imaginary axis and your R groups are pointing outwards. So nakapaikot siya. Imagine DNA. Okay, so ganun yung itsura ng um, alpha helix. However, there are some amino acids that are not good for alpha helices, especially yung proline. So they do another version, no? the beta conformation. So for beta conformation, naka-zigzag pattern yung amino acid natin instead na nakapa-circle. Okay, so pa-zigzag sila. So yan, since pa-zigzag sila, so isang flat na molecule lang magagawa natin. Yung ginawa nyo sa ano, yung ginawa nyo dyan sa drawing natin, ayan, uh, yun ay parang ano, parang ano yun, uh, beta sheets, no? Kasi naka-straight line lang natin siya drawing. Okay. So, ganun lang. Ayan, dalawa yung uri ng ating beta conformation. It could be anti-parallel or parallel, depending on the position of your N and the C terminal. Pag alternating ang N and C terminal, yun ay anti-parallel. But, if ang arrangement ng inyong N-terminal at C-terminal ay isa, you have the parallel beta sheets. Also, may, bet, may beta turn din tayo, especially in the presence of proline, pwede rin because of glycine. Okay? So, pwede sila mag-twist. No? So, instead of having a straight line, pwede sila mag uh, mag-bend paloob, no? Kaya yung ating first picture dito, ganito itsura. Uh, and the alpha helix yung nandito. Wala pala akong nilagay na beta sheets dito. And so, puro alpha helix yung meron tayo dyan. Wala pala akong picture. Na. Okay, so anyway, wala akong picture pa ng beta conformation, no? Mamaya, pakita natin. Okay, so yun yung ating ano, secondary structure. Alpha or beta, each of them may dalawang subcategory. For alpha, it could be left-handed or right-handed. For beta, it could be parallel or anti-parallel, depending on the position of your N and C terminals. Okay, and meron din tayong tinatawag na beta turn, no? in the presence of proline and glycine. Pwede tumiklop yung ating sheets, no? Because they isomerize. Ngayon naman, zoom out uli tayo. So, zoom out na naman tayo. So, let's talk about the tertiary and the quaternary structure of the protein. The overall look of your... Uh, protein is called the tertiary structure. No? So, kumbaga, ito na yung overall picture ng uh, protein natin. Yun na yung tertiary structure niya. So, itong picture dito sa gilid, ayan. So, that is the overall look of our amino, uh, of our protein. So, yan na yung tertiary structure niya. Ano naman kapag quaternary structure? Sa quaternary structure naman, ito yung compilation ng different tertiary structure. Okay. So, there are proteins na more than one yung uh, I mean, may mga groups of proteins that act as one. No? So, one example of which is yung ating hemoglobin. Apat na, I mean, ano yan, apat na proteins yan that make up one cell. No? So, apat na proteins yan, they act all together as one. Yun yung quaternary structure. Again, ano yung difference ng tertiary, tertiary and the quaternary? For the tertiary, ito yung overall outlook ng isang protein. However, pag pinagdikit-dikit mo yung mga protein mo and they act as one, that's the quaternary structure. Okay? So, ganun lang. Ah, ito, ito yun na second sentence. Some proteins contain two or more separate polypeptide chains or subunits which may be identical or different. So, ibig sabihin, more than one yung ating proteins dito. So, the arrangement of these subunits constitutes the quaternary structure. So, kapag may apat na different versions, quaternary structure na, for example. 
Okay. So in classifying this higher order structure of amino acids, we can tell kung sila ay fibrous proteins o kaya sila ay globular proteins. No? So pag sinabi natin fibrous proteins, these are proteins that are in long strands or nakasheets sila, fibers. No? And kapag sinabi naman natin globular, these are uh, proteins that are circular in shape, no? spherical in shape. For example, itong drawing natin dito, this is a globular protein. Kasi naka-circle siya, no? And there are some fibrous proteins, no? Na flat, no? Meron tayo niyan sa body. Pag-usapan natin mamaya. Okay? So, saan ginagamit yung mga fibrous proteins? Fibrous proteins are used kapag meron tayong mga structural materials sa body, no? And kapag mga globular proteins naman, they are used for transports, no? Okay? So, ganun. Again, pag fibrous proteins, these are proteins that are used in our body structures. And kapag yan ay globular, sila yung ginagamit for uh, other purposes such as food transport or uh, regulation or enzymes. Okay, so ito. Punta na tayo sa fibrous proteins. Fibrous proteins are adapted for a structural function. Some of the examples of the fibrous proteins are the following. So alpha keratin, collagen, and silk fibroin. They are some examples or they are some good examples of the fibrous proteins. No? Since ang ating fibrous proteins ay naka long sheets, no? naka straight line sila, they have this characteristic of strength and flexibility. No? Kasi naka flat lang sila yun. No? So, matibay sila, generally. So, yung mga collagen natin sa mukha na yan. So, yung mga proteins natin dito, naka-flat yan. Okay. So, that hindi agad mapoprotrude ng any external forces yung ating mukha. Because they serve as a barrier no? sa mukha natin. Isipin nyo itong mukha natin, ito ay flat sheet ng collagen. Okay. So, yan. So, they protect no? the skin. Uh, they protect our internal uh, internal organs and also they provide flexibility because remember yung ating mga sheets they can turn okay so yun yung reason bakit tayo may mga contour contour sa mukha <laughs> okay and also fibrous proteins are insoluble in water kaya tayo hindi tayo natutunaw sa tubig because anything yung mga proteins natin for example sa mukha they are hydro Phobic, no? Ayaw nila sa water. Kaya dumadaan lang yung tubig sa mukha natin. Okay. So, ganun. On the surface of its sequence kasi may mga hydrophobic amino acids. Okay. So, ito yung ilang example. Now, let's have the alpha keratins. Uh, alpha keratin, this is a fibrous protein that is found mostly on hair, wools, no? Sa animals, sa wolves nila. Nails, claws, keel, horns, hooves, and anything. Basta na sa outer layer ng skin. Okay? So, ito yung alpha keratin. Yun yung mga nasa skin natin, nasa kuko, nasa buhok. No? So, lahat ng iyan ay mga fibrous proteins. If you check their amino acid sequence, no? mga naka-flat yan. Okay? So, ito yung itsura nila. So, ito yung example ng keratin sa ating skin, okay. sa hair, ayan. So, nakadere-derecho sila. Okay. So, naka-flat lahat sila. Nadoble ko ata yung slide na to. Okay, so yan. So, one example is the keratin. Okay, so... Ito, bigyan natin ng emphasis yung turns ng ano, yung turns sa mga sheets natin. Okay. So for example, may buhok ako. Bakit kaya siya nag-curve, no? The reason why it curves is because of the ano, because of the turns sa ating amino acid sequence dito. Okay? One of the ano, familiar reasons but kulot tayo is because of the disulfide bond, no? Okay? So we have this ano we have this amino acid here. Kunara ito yung isang isang amino acid strand sa buhok and then here's another one. 
Ang pwede kasi mangyari is that ganito. Pwede may ganito mangyari. In the presence of oxygen, our hair can be oxidized or reduced, no? And as they become oxidized, they form chemical bonds, no? And yung formation ng chemical bonds between, ano, cysteine parts, no? Ng ating amino acid sequence sa hair. Pwedeng uneven yung distribution ng formation ng bonds ng sulfur doon, no? Sa cysteine, sa cysteine ano, residues ng ating buhok. So, pwedeng may mga SS bond dito na mabuo. Merong iba naman na hindi mabubuo yung SS bond, no? Sulfur-sulfur bond. So, nangyayari, uneven yung uh, distribution ng bond sa buhok natin. So, that's why our hair, nagtutwist-twist sila. And habang lumalaki yun, yan, nagiging kulot na yung hair natin. So, ano ginagawa natin, no? Especially kapag Pasko, lalo na ng mga babae, ang ginagawa nyo pag Pasko, nagpapa-rebound, no? So, actually, yung rebounding, that is the total opposite sa ginagawa talaga on a molecular level. What happens is that ganito, Sa rebounding, hindi natin siya nire-rebound talaga. Pinuputol natin yung bond na yun. Okay? So, yun yung misconception. Kaso tinatawag siyang rebound. Kaya, sige, tinanggap na lang. Pero in reality, you're actually breaking up all those SS bond, no? Ng ating mga cysteine amino acid residue sa buhok. Okay, so pinuputol natin yon by applying some reducing agent na chemicals. Yung mga mababaho na nilalagay sa buhok. So, may mga chemicals yon that can cut down this SS bond ng ating cysteine um, residues so that magiging straight na uli sila. However, over time, napapansin nyo, kumukulot uli yung buhok. Bakit? That's normal kasi, no? Uh, when your hair is, ano, when your hair is exposed to oxygen in the air, pwede siya ma-oxidize, no? Kaya ganun. So again, sino yung dahilan bakit kumukulot buhok natin? Yung cysteine residues sa ating amino acids na no? sa ating hair. Ayan. So nangyayari, when they are oxidized, yan, nabubuo yung SS bond uneven. Para bumalik yun sa pagiging straight uli, we do the rebonding. No? Yung rebonding, total opposite talaga yung nangyayari doon. Pinuputol mo yung mga SS bond na yun. Ginagawa nyo siyang individual SH bonds na lang. Pinuputol nyo yung mga SS bonds. Bali, from here, ginagawa natin ganito. Kaso, over time, maging ganito ulit. No? So, yan. The next one will be the collagen. Okay, yung collagen naman, alpha helix sila, pero... They are oriented in such way na naka sheets sila no para mabigyan nila ng protection yung ating skin no para ma-cover nila yung large surface area na ating, ng ating face no so ito yung itsura ng collagen so they are separate alpha helices pero naka flat flat sila no so ito alpha helix yan pero patong-patong sila to give us extra protection okay so, yung collagen natin, it could vary. Pwede siyang, ano, pwede siya yung mga cartilage natin. Mga tendons, kung tayo ay manok. <laughs> okay. So, yung mga tendons na yun, those are collagen, no? Rich yun sa amino acids. So, actually, pwede nyo kainin yung tendons kung kaya nyo nguyain. Okay. That's a good source of amino acids, no? So, yun. So, matitiba ito. Bakit? Kasi naka-alpha helix sila. So, imagine nyo na lang parang rope yan na multiple strands, okay? So, multiple strands ng rope, di ba? Matibay. Hindi agad siya napuputol. So, yun yung purpose ng collagen. They provide ano, protection as well as yung pang-hold ng body parts natin. Okay. So, yan yung ilang examples. Okay. Also, there are some residues in our collagen na composed siya ng uncommon amino acids, no? Yung, some of the uncommon amino acids ay yung mga 5-hydroxylysine. Uh, yan. So, yun yung mga ilang examples ng uncommon amino acid that are found in our collagen. Okay. 
Nasa ko yan? Ah, wala. Ito, share lang yan. Ah, dito naman tayo. So, let's talk about globular proteins, no? So, yung globular proteins natin, the reason why iba-iba yung shape niya, yung mga bulky-bulky na yun, but iba-iba yung shape nila, that's because of the secondary uh, the secondary characteristics ng structure niya, no? Okay? So, remember kanina yung ating ano, beta sheets, pwede siya mag-loop, no? So, pwede siya mag-loop because of the presence of glycine or proline. Pwede siya mag-loop. Ibig sabihin, pwede umikot yung ating proteins. O kaya, they can form barrels. Na. So, yan. So, ito yung mga barrels. Okay. So, ano yung essence na ito? No? So, ito yung mga tumutulong sa atin to determine kung ano yung magiging overall structure ng isang protein. Okay. Kunwari, may beta barrel tayo sa ating protein. That means may butas yung ating protein, no? And doon pwede pumasok yung other foreign materials, no? Uh, commonly, yung beta barrels these are used by toxins, no? For in, in this case Staphylococcus aureus, no? So ginagamit nila yung beta barrel to punch through the cell, no? Para butasin nila yung cells natin, makapasok yung ibang toxins nila. Okay? So, they associate the beta barrel sa surface ng cell natin para makapasok sila. Okay. So, in the case of COVID naman, hindi naman ganun yung nangyayari. No? So, nangyayari sa COVID naman, they, at they bind themselves sa receptors ng ating cell and then they will instruct the cell no, na i-absorb sila. Okay. So, ganun. Okay. So, dito pinapakita lang natin yung different motifs of our... Uh, beta sheets that constitute the itsura ng global, uh, globular proteins. Okay? So, uh, the beta sheets can be uh, can be a crossover. So, that means alternating sila. Pwedeng nakaloop. Uh, yung loop natin, pwede right-handed or left-handed loop. Or pwedeng mga sheets then, no? similar to the, ano, to the collagens kanina. Okay? So here are some of the protein motifs of the globular proteins. No? So for example, uh, the albumin of human, ito yung globular protein natin. So bulky yan. So may kikita natin, ang kanyang quaternary structure ay composed of different motifs. No? May mga alpha helices and then may mga uh, puro alpha helix lang pala to. Okay. So, ito rin, this is for ano, E. coli, ferritin. Ito yung reason kung bakit nila nadadigest yung mga bakal-bakal, ferritin. Okay, so, so I'm not familiar with the others. So, yan yung ano, overall structure ng ating um, globular proteins. No? So, pwede rin naman ganito itsura nila. So, instead of alpha helix, pwede yung puro beta sheets sila, no? So, one example would be this from E. coli. So, this is an enzyme, uh, UDP. That means it is used in pro, uh, energy production sa E. coli. Okay. So, instead of in, uh, using alpha helices, they use beta turns or beta loops. No? Ito naman, for humans, and this is collagenase 3. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, isa to sa mga... Uh, ginagamit natin na biomolecule to produce collagen. Nakikita natin, incorporated ang alpha helix, itong red, and the beta turns. No? Oh, this one is our immu immunoglobulin. So that's another protein of humans. Okay, so makikita natin, we have beta sheets no? that are alternating, although we have some portions of alpha helix dito. Okay, so that means ang ating globular proteins, they can use ano, multiple variations. No? Okay, so pwede iba-iba yung gawin nila. Pwede naka-beta loop, pwede naka-barrel, or pwede mixture of the alpha and the beta helix. No? So here's one example for humans. This is the alcohol dehydrogenase. So we use this sa ating ano, metabolism. So, yan. so this is used to uh, this is used to cut off the glucose molecules. No? 
glucose dehydrogenase. So ito yung isa sa mga enzyme that is used in uh, glycolysis. So remember, Monsignor, it incorporates the usage of alpha helix and the beta sheets. No? So yan. This one is from rats. No? Uh, that's Inuvil coenzyme A hydratase. So siguro ginagamit niya to sa kanyang Krebs cycle. Okay. Kasi may coenzyme A, may COA. And this one is um, phosphofructokinase. This is used for Escherichia coli, E. coli. Meron din ito sa tao, no? Yung mga phosphofructokinases. These are the enzymes that are used to add phosphates, no? Phosphates sa ating molecules. So as you can see, it is composed of both uh, alpha helix and beta sheets, no? So yan. So halo-halo yung uh, mot motif nila. Then we have here, uh, this is from gonorrhea. Uh, alam nyo na yung gonorrhea. That's one of the STDs. Kung mapapansin nyo yung gonorrhea, di ba parang, ano, parang nakatwist yung dulo nun because of the twisting alpha helix part. No? Uh, this is from E. coli. Uh, di na ako familiar dyan. And this is jellyfish. No? Uh, this is the fluorescent protein in the jellyfish. Mababansin nyo, it incorporates the use of beta barrels. Okay. So, in summary, the ternary and the quaternary structure, ito yung ating complete three-dimensional shape ng uh, polypeptide chain. So, it, it encompasses the use of both alpha or beta helix natin. For tertiary, for tertiary structures, uh, meron tayong mga... Dalawang types nun. So, pwede siyang fibrous, pwede siyang globular din. Fibrous proteins, these are used for structural purposes. For globular proteins, ito yung mga complicated. Ito yung pwedeng mixture ng lahat ng pwedeng variations, lahat ng pwedeng motif ng cell, ng, ano, ng protein structure. Okay. So, yun. So, so, mas complicated yung globular protein compared to the fibrous proteins. Kasi kapag fibrous proteins, usually alpha helix lang sila lahat o kaya beta helix, ah, beta, beta sheets. No? Pero for globular, they use both. No? Kaya gulo-gulo yung shapes nila. For COVID-19, ganun din. No? So that's a globular protein, especially the spike protein. That's a globular protein that is composed of both alpha and beta sheets. No? Kaya ang shape niya ay parang corn kernel. Okay. So, ganun. Okay. Yung patterns ng ating amino acid sequence, we call them as motifs. Okay. And the quaternary structure results from the interaction of the subunits of protein. So, ito yung ano, unsumbed ng mga proteins. Mga pinagdikit-dikit na proteins. As they function as one. Okay. So in this part, we will talk about the protein denaturation and the folding sequence. No? So bakit nga ba nasisira yung proteins natin? No? Bakit yung itlog, pag ininit mo, naluluto siya? No? So that's actually one of the uh, examples of protein denaturation. When you say protein denaturation, we are destroying the three-dimensional structure of uh, ating protein. So, sinisira natin yung 3D shape ng protein when we denature proteins. No? Okay? So, paano natin na uh, sisira yung ano, 3D structure niya? We can introduce heat, no? O kaya, pwede rin naman natin baguhin yung kanilang interactions by changing the pH, changing the solvents. Okay? So, yan. So, yun yung mga ways to change the uh, overall structure of the protein. Pwede mo initen, pwede mo palitan yung pH, o kaya pwede mo palitan ng solvent. No? So, yun. So, ipakita natin dito yung ano, yung process ng denaturation. Asang slide ba yun?
Ah, wala pala akong example dito. Ako na rin na lang. So, ad renewing ko pala last year. Yung itlog yun, no? So, yung itlog natin, yung sa ano, egg white, yung, ang tawag doon? Albumin doon. So, yung albumin natin, that is a globular protein, no? So, what happens when you introduce heat, no? Kunwari, ito yung ano, albumin. So, globular siya. So, meaning nakapa-circle-circle sila. Pwedeng may alpha and beta turns dyan. What happens when you hit your, ano, your uh, egg white? What happens is that because of the disruption sa pH, no? Or because of the introduction of heat, pwedeng maputol yung ibang chemical bonds sa ating globular proteins. And once those chemical bonds are cut, ang mangyayari, mag-straighten out yung ating uh, proteins. No? Magpa-flatten magpa sila. Kaya they form this white mixture. No? Yung kulay puti na yon that is composed of flat chain ng amino acid residue ng denatured proteins. Okay? So, ganun. And also, theoretically, we can... Uh, reverse the denaturation process. No? Pwede natin balik ta rin yung denaturation process. That's why last time, nakita natin sa Facebook na yung egg daw pwede i-unboil. And that's true. Pwede naman. No? So, the denaturation of protein is a, ano, is a dynamic process. Ibig sabihin, it is reversible. So, if you can denature your protein, then most likely, you can reverse it back. Okay? Pwede mo ibalik yon. However, sa case ng itlog, pag din ano, pag gin, pag binalik mo siya sa ori original structure niya, hindi na siya pwedeng kainin, syempre. Because you will need to use other materials, no, para ma other materials that are harmful for humans, no. May napanood ako ng ganung video eh. Pinakita nga niya doon, no, na renatured yung protein by introducing other molecules such as urea. Hinalo-halo niya yun sa egg white. As a result, yung mga bonds na naputol, bumalik. No? So, biglang nag-clear na lang yung solution. No? Bumalik yung albumin. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, the unboiling of egg is theoretically possible. Mahirap lang gawin. And then, hindi mo na siya pwede makain after. Okay. So, again, ano yung mga factors why our proteins are being denatured? Pwedeng because of heat. The heat introduction can cause the bonds to break up or it can destroy the weak interactions, especially the hydrogen bonds. No? Kaya nga kumukulo yung tubig because napuputol ng heat yung hydrogen bonds. No? So, ganun din sa proteins. No? Uh, introducing heat will cut off the bonds no? sa ating proteins. So, they will flatten out. Pwede rin naman... In, uh, taasan mo yung pH. So, destroying the pH of your proteins can alter the isoelectric point. No? So, pwede siya mag-precipitate at different pH. No? Or pwede palitan mo yung solvent. No? Suppose your, your, ano, your protein is ano, hydrophobic. So, that means yung hydrophobic parts ng amino acid residue niya pointing outwards. Pag nilagay mo yun sa hydrophobic na solvent, no? let's say organic solvent, hexane, babaliktad yun. No? The hydrophilic part will be pointed outwards naman. So, mag-flip yung ano, structure ng inyong protein. And as a result, masisira na siya. Okay. So, yun lang yung three primary reason: Heat, uh, pH, o kaya solvent. Okay, and also... Ang takeaway natin dito is that the, uh, the denaturation of the protein can be reversed. No? Reversible siya. So, ibig sabihin yung itlog na niluto nyo, pwede nyo ibalik yung sa normal. However, hindi nyo na siya pwede kainin ulit. No? And sayang lang oras nyo dun. <laughs> okay. So, let's talk about this now. Remember, when our amino acids are ano, sequenced in the ribosome, diba it starts from mRNA. We discussed din naman natin ito bandang dulo. So, ang ating DNA, magduplicate yan together with it. May mRNA template tayo to create new proteins. Then, yung mRNA na yun, tatawid yun, papuntang 
uh, ribosomes. Once na nasa ribosome na siya, mangyayari, yung ating amino acids na sequence, ganito lang siya, isang straight line. However, once it is excreted, no? uh, once it was excre uh, excreted by the ribosome, it will start folding. Okay? So, pag nilabas yan ng ribosome, bigla-bigla yan magpo-fold. Why? Because our cell has water. So, ang gagawin ng ating protein from a smooth chain, pag nilabas na yun ng ribosome natin, bigla-bigla na siya magpo-form ng kanyang conformation. Automatic yun. Okay? So, the folding of our polypeptides or the protein is a rapid stepwise process. No? So, stepwise yun in such case na isa-isang lalabas, isa-isang magpo-protrude yung hydrophobic parts palabas sa alpha helix, kunwari. Okay? Until the final shape is achieved. Okay? So, ganun. So, again, ang idea dito is that after our mRNA is converted to amino acid sequence, pag nilabas na yun ng ribosome, it will start folding based on the characteristics of its amino acid sequence. No? Magpo-fold yan na stepwise, pero very quick yan. Okay? And there are some proteins that undergo assisted folding. So, ibig sabihin, there are some, ano, chaperones, kung tatawagin natin. Well, literal na chaperones, tawag namin doon. Okay. So, there are some proteins that needs assistance in order for them to fold correctly. Because if they are unfolded, correct, uh, if they are folded incorrectly, ibig sabihin, mali yung folding nila, the protein will be rendered useless, no? Okay. So, ganun kasi. Kaya, ang gusto ng katawan natin, they want to maximize the, ano, the production of protein by making sure that it is uh, correctly folded. So, that's why sometimes we, we use chaperones. No? These are molecules that assist the folding process. Okay. So, tutulungan nila tayo mag-fold. Kasi, ang nangyayari kapag yung, yung protein, mali yung pagka-fold niya, yun, dysfunctional na yung mapoproduce mong product. No? Hindi mo na magagamit yung protein na yun. Or, it could lead to certain diseases. No? So, let's talk about those. No? So, there are some defects that are, uh, that are attributed to the misfolding of the protein. And they cause genetic disorders. No? So, marami yan. And that includes type 2 diabetes. Alzheimer's disease, Huntington's disease, and Parkinson's disease, they are all um, characterized by one thing. Yung proteins nila ay misfolded. No? So, mali yung pagka-fold ng kanilang proteins. So, as a result, dysfunctional yung proteins na kailangan. Kaya, nakakasakit sila. Okay? So, actually, ito yung tinitignan sa ano. Ito yung, yung tinitignan sa molecular laboratories. No? So, when they say they are looking for cures for ano, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, what they are actually doing is they are trying to see how to revert the misfolding of your uh, protein. So, di ba, na-denatured uh, na, na yung protein mo? Okay. Pwede mo kasi ibalik pa yun. No? So, yun yung ginagawa ng mga nag-work sa molecular laboratory. They are trying to look for ways to reverse that process. No? So, since ano, theoretically reversible yung misfolding, that means there is hope no, for those who experience these diseases. No? Although, medyo mahirap lang because napakalaking protein yan eh ng, let's say, type, eh, yung mga insulin, malaking proteins yan. So, medyo mahirap pa sa ngayon. But, uh, because of CRISPR, no, yun yung technology that is used to edit genomes that causes misfolding sa ating, ano, sa ating proteins, no, yun. Most likely, ma-cure natin to in, uh, let's say, a decade from now or two decades from now now because of the introduction of CRISPR. So it will try to uh, edit the genetic sequence that causes the misfolding of the protein. 
Okay, so ganun lang. Okay, so in summary, the three-dimensional structure of the proteins can be destroyed by denaturation. So some of the process that can lead to denaturation of your protein ay yung change sa heat, change sa pH, o kaya yung change sa solvent. No? So palitan mo lang yung isa sa tatlong yon, your protein will be destroyed. No? So... And protein folding, this is also important because it tells us whether our protein is good, no? is if it is functional or not. Kasi kapag mali yung folding niya, dysfunctional na yung protein natin. That means hindi na siya usable. Okay? Some proteins will fold as is, no? as in mabilisan yung kanyang folding. And there are some proteins that needs help no? in the form of chaperones na no? or nakalagay dito chaperonins na no? chaperones na lang so those chaperones help no assist the folding of the protein okay and protein misfolding leads to different molecular diseases no okay so yan uh, ano pa yung last statement natin dito Ano pa yung isa pang summary natin? Tignan ko. Okay, so that will be the end no, of our discussion. So again, uh, quick recap lang tayo. Anong mga nangyari today? Anong haba nangyari today? So basically, we discussed the structure of protein. No? So the structure of protein can tell us whether the protein is good or not. Whether it is functioning or not. No? So for us to understand kung bakit siya nagmamalfunction, bakit siya hindi nagmamalfunction, is kailangan alamin muna natin ano-ano yung mga levels no or yung order ng uh, yung order ng organization ng ating protein structure. So we begin first with the amino acid sequence, primary protein yan. And then yung ating amino acid sequence, pwede siya mag-form ng secondary structure which could be alpha helix or the beta sheets. No? So for the alpha helix, our peptide chain are wound around an imaginary axis. So nakapacircle sila sa isang imaginary axis wherein the R groups are pointing outwards. For beta conformation naman, our amino acid sequence, the, yung R group niya ay nakazigzag. No? So nakazigzag sila. Okay, and also depending on the residue of the amino acid, pwede tayong magkaroon ng beta turns, no? yun nagpo-flip, no? nagpo-fold ng paper. Imagine nyo na lang beta turn, i-fold nyo yung paper nyo, ayun. Yung folding point na yun, that could be either caused by proline or glycine. Then we have the tertiary, that is the complete the structure of your protein, and the quaternary, Ang quaternary is the overall, no? yung parang ito yung pinaka-complete ng complete. No? So, for tertiary, ito yung as a whole, uh, as one unit. Pag quaternary, ito yung pinagsama-samang subunits. No? Okay. So, for tertiary, uh, dalawa yung characteristic niya. Ang ating protein could be fibrous or globular. So, kapag fib fibrous, straight lines lang sila. Pag globular, they are circular. And globular proteins uh, have variety of structures. No? And they have variety of tertiary structure. Pwede pagsamasamahin nila lahat ng possible configurations. Kaya complicated yung shapes nila. So they sometimes employ beta sheets, beta turns, or beta barrel. Or pwede na naman purely alpha helix lang sila. And then, by introducing external factors, our proteins could be denatured. No? Pwede masira yung ating tertiary structure by introducing heat, changes in the pH, o kaya changes in your solvent. No? So those, uh, those factors actually affect the weak interactions in them, yung mga London forces nila. So that causes the protein to change its conformation, hence they are denatured. 
but the denaturation of protein is reversible. So that means pwede ibalik sila sa original state nila. Though it requires lots of effort. No? Because when you say proteins, we are pertaining to thousands of atoms in there. Kaya mahirap gawin yan. Kaya ang tagal ng research yan. When our proteins are produced from the ribosome, no? once our mRNA are translated na into functional amino acids, yung folding niya ay mabilis. No? Although there are some that needs assistance or chaperones. No? Parang nasa ano lang, no? JS. Because uh, kapag mali yung ating folding process, that leads to genetic disorders, no? other diseases. And because uh, alam natin kanina lang that denaturation can be uh, reversed, that means there is a cure for these diseases. No? Medyo, medyo mahirap lang talaga. Okay? Sa ngayon, sa diabetes, ang ginagawa nila, they introduce insulin na lang muna no? as a remedy. Pero who knows, no? one of these days, uh, with the help of the CRISPR technology that won the Nobel Prize last year, um, malay nyo, uh, in few years, wala nang diabetic sa mundo. No? So yan, kasi pwede naman i-reverse yung ganong process. No? Another disease is itong sickle cell. Okay, so itong sickle cell, this is the... Um, disruption or yung pagkasira ng ating red blood cell. No? So as I told you, hemoglobin, this is just a protein no? composed of four subunits. No? Apat na subunits yan. Because of the change sa kanyang amino acid structure, no? because of just a subtle change sa kanyang amino acid structure, pwedeng masira yung overall integrity ng structure na yan. Pwede masira yung ganyang shape niya, yung cute na bini shape na yan. Pwede masira yan. Itong disease na to, this is the sickle cell anemia. No? So what happens here is that instead of your, ano, of your hemoglobin shaping like this after it was produced no, by the cells, naging ganito yung shape niya, nakakrescent, no? So, this is inefficient when transporting oxygen. Kaya maraming namamatay sa anemia. They lack oxygen. So, mahina sila parate. So, yun. So, ito ay caused by the changes sa primary structure ng amino acid naman. Okay. So, yung primary structure ng amino acids na yun, I think that's valine. Double check ko lang kasi the last time I read an article about this was years ago. <laughs> so I think that was valine, no? That was changed by another amino acid. Change. Ah, tignan lang natin. Ah, sabi dito, ah, sickle cell is a result of a change in a single nucleotide, no? Sabihin, isang maling sequence lang, mali agad yung, yung protein structure. No? And that can be reversed, no? Ayan. So, ito yung picture natin na yan. That can be reversed by CRISPR. Okay. So, yung CRISPR natin, pwede niya baguhin yung sequence ng ating amino acid. Okay. For example, we have this sequence, GGA, uh, CAT, GGT. So, ano yung amino acid tong GAA? Ito yung mRNA. So, ang GAA, ang amino acid doon ay? Okay, so, glue. Oh, glutamine. Ano nangyari? Basta sickle cell that became CU, uh, GUA. GUA. Ano kaya ang amino acid katumbas na nanapin ko? Uh, from glutamine, naging valine. Okay? Because of that minor defect, isang amino acid sequence lang na nagbago. Isang amino acid lang na nagbago. Look at what happened to the cell. Naging crescent na. No? So, pumangit na siya. Pero again, let's have hope. Kasi reversible yan. Si CRISPR, ang ginagawa ng technology na yun is that Diba sa DNA natin, so it reads the DNA, no? molecular robot yan, binabasa niya yung sequence, and then it replaces the 
mistaken um, codon. It replaces the mistaken part. Or pwede niya i-cut off yung part na yan. So, yan. So, that kapag nag-produce ng RNA, tama na siya. Okay? Tama na yung RNA na napoproduce niya. So, that when the RNA is sequenced to amino acid, correct na yung cell na mapoproduce natin. Pero still, it will take a very long time for this for that to be realized. Okay? So, kaya, magundu, kaya maganda yung world ng ano, biotechnology. No? May mga chemists din doon kasi kami-kami yung nga nakakaalam ng mga ganitong ganyan. No? So, we help them in understanding paano nangyayari ito and how they can be reversed. No? Yan. So, yan. So, hopefully, one day, may mag-medical sa inyo, mag may, may mag-medicine sa inyo or may mag ng research or pwede na ang turo na lang, no? Share nyo na lang yung hope natin from this, na, uh, from this chapter, no? So, ganun lang. So, marami pa actually, no? Marami pa ang diseases caused by this. Although, the most common na alam ko talaga is the sickle cell. Okay. Yung kasi yung binabasa ko dati. <laughs> yung ginagawa ko siya ng article. Uh, re yung review lang. Okay. So, that will be all for our session today. No? So, I hope na, na na medyo may insights tayo about this topic. Especially the importance of the reversible process of denaturation ng protein that can be reversed. Okay. Yan. So hopefully one day tayo mismo maka-contribute sa science no para mabawasan na yung diseases sa earth no. Uh, with with regards to COVID-19 naman, okay? 'Di ba mapapansin niyo the sequence can change the structure. Okay? Ganun din kasi yung nangyari sa COVID-19. Share ko lang ulit ha bago tayo matapos. COVID-19 mutation G614D. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, D614G variation of the COVID-19. Share ko lang, parang wala lang. dami ko kasi nababasa about this eh, kaya share ko na rin sa inyo para aware kayo. Okay, so remember our spike proteins, they are the crowns of the coronaviruses, no? Sp proteins yan that are produced by the viruses. No? Okay, so ang nangyayari dito sa bakit nagkaroon tayo ng first mutation ng COVID-19 is that uh, the 614th uh, amino acid sequence ng ating spike protein, that is D. No? What is D? Aspartate yan. Na-convert siya into glycine. Okay? So that minor change sa primary structure ng amino acid that change the overall behavior of the protein. Okay? Ganon din sa sickle cell, di ba? So, from, ano, from glutamine, naging valine. Just one amino acid sequence can change the entire behavior of the protein. No? So, ganon. Ayan, so ito yung first mutation. This was around March 2020. Uh, first found in Germany. Okay. So ayan. Um, ganun nangyari. Isang amino acid sequence lang nagbago. The entire protein change. No? So mas naging marami yung spikes niya. And as a result, it is more infectious. No? For the UK variant, uh, medyo hindi ko na binasa. No? <laughs> And the... Uh, South African variants, no? So, medyo hindi ko na nabasa masyado. Although, ang idea lang doon is that kapag tumaas yung infectivity rate noon, most likely that can be attributed to the changes in the uh, spike protein, no? Okay, so ganun lang. Well, since usapang COVID na rin tayo, pag-usapan, share ko na rin yung ano, knowledge ko about the vaccines, no? So yung vaccines natin, uh, wala pa tayo actually. Sila sila palang meron. So marami yan, no? So they have the Sinovac and meron tayong ano, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna, J&J, no? So different techniques yung ginagawa nila, no? Para ma-train yung ating body. So for, ano, for Sinovac, no? For the Chinese, ano, 
Chinese ano, vaccine, they use inactivated versions of the uh, virus. No? So, yeah, virus mismo yun, coronavirus, pero dead. No? Patay na siya. Wala siyang genetic material na sa loob. So, hindi siya mag replicate Okay. So, uh, common naman yun, no? Kasi baka isipin nyo, ay, virus po yung pinapasok nila, no? Yes, virus talaga, pero deactivated, no? Wala na siyang laman-laman sa loob. So, ginagawa nila doon is, you have the dead virus, eto mismo, yung coronavirus na yan, papasok sa katawan, although dead yan, so hindi yan dadami. Yan yung bubugbugin ng ating immune cells, no? <laughs> yan yung aaway niya, para matrain siya. Para in case na ma-infect ka ulit, alam na niya kung sino bubugbugin niya. Okay, yung mga coronaviruses na. Yung SARS-CoV-2 na. Okay, so yun yung isang technique. You have the dead virus uh, injected to you. So, your body can train to fight that. Okay, so uh, anong common vir- ano, vaccine yung may ganyang knowledge din? Um, isa isa doon ay yung sa tetano, no? anti-tetano shots, no? So, yun, sa anti-tetanus shots, may mga dead viruses din doon na nakalagay. Para alam ng katawan yung bubugbugin niya. Nire-recognize nila yung protein structure. Yun yung ginagawa ng ating immune cells. Eh. Yung proteins na yan, kinakabisado nila yan. Para alam nila kung sino bubugbugin nila na virus. Okay. So, another technique used by vaccine manufacturers, yung spike protein lang yung nilalagay nila. So, itong spike lang, itong kernel shape, So, itong spike lang. Actually, alam nyo ba, ito ay graduate thesis ng isang student sa Amerika. <laughs> Imagine mo yung graduate thesis mo, no? Nakatulong to help the pandemic, uh, to help uh, erase the pandemic sa Earth. No? Amazing lang. So, thesis niya yun. So, ginawa niya, uh, yung spike protein na yan, uh, yun yung kinuha niya instead of the virus. So, that, kasi ito lang naman kasi babasahin ng ano ng immune cells natin. Yan aalamin niya lang yung spike protein. So yan, once na may spike protein ka na sa katawan, alam na ng body na ito ay foreign. Yun yung aaway niya. Yun yung nasa ano, yun yung nasa AstraZeneca ata pati Pfizer spike proteins. And there are some ano, there are some vaccines that use the mRNA of the proteins, no? So, dito ulit pumapasok yung topic natin. So, you have the mRNA that will be sequenced by the ribosome. Then, after nun, mag-protein folding yan. Pag na-produce, na-read na yan ng ribosome, i-convert na yan into the spike protein. And the spike protein will be released by the body. Ayan. So, once it is outside sa cell, uh, babasahin na yan ng white blood cells mo, yung spike protein. And marirecognize nila yan as a foreign threat. No? So, aawayin nila yung mga spike protein na yan. Okay. So, yan yung... Yan lang. Yan lang gusto ko ma-share. No? Kasi medyo related naman sila sa protein structures. No? So, yan. Ano yung pinaka-main idea ng topic natin na to? That the structure of the, cell, uh, of the protein can be determined by the sequence. No? Kapag mali yung sequence, mali yung structure. Okay, so ibig sabihin, it could be more infectious or in the case of the sickle cell, ineffective no? or unusable. Okay. So that's our topic for today. Uh, maybe I want you to search more on the UK variant then. So search nyo na lang what happened sa UK variant. Marunong naman kayo mag-search ng articles. Ganito lang gawin nyo. COVID-19, UK variant, plus journal. Nalagyan nyo na ng plus sign. Puro journal articles na yung lalabas. Ayan. Tapos, ano gagawin nyo? Sci-hub. No. <laughs> so, yan. So, kunwari ito, this publication by Kirby. Okay? So, ganun lang. No? Although, hindi naman to assignment or activity. Wala lang. Para mas marami tayong matutunan. Okay? Kasi, what's happening around us? No? Let's use this as an opportunity to relate our topics. No? Kasi yun naman yung overall goal ng learning. I-apply natin yung knowledge natin sa biochem, sa nangyayari sa buhay. No? So ngayon, alam nyo na, na yung mga sakit na yan that can be uh, cured. No? Okay. Medyo matagal nga lang. Okay. So ganun lang. So I hope na 
na appreciate nyo kahit pa paano yung topic natin na to. Although puro words lang siya, no? Puro kakabisaduhin nyo lang yan. But as long as you understand the process, no? Sa protein folding, sa kanyang forms, no? Sa kanyang shapes, no? Yun. We will understand what's happening around us, no? More, no? So, yun lang. So, that's all for our session today. Uh, I will open the quiz for this chapter next week. No? Pwede na tayo mag-quiz done. So, more on ano lang, more on terms. No? And then, um, next week will be our last discussion for the, uh, the midterm period that is about enzymes. So, for the enzymes, ito may calculation tayo, pero... Since alam ko na computer naman kayo right now, so i-excel na lang natin yung calculations para mabilis. Okay. So enzyme is one of the proteins, no? So patapos na tayo sa ating protein uh, uh, series, no? After noon, we can now start with other biomolecules such as lipid, carbohydrates, no? Uh, and others, no? So yan. So with that, so thank you for your attendance. No? So hopefully my additional ideas kayong nakuha. Okay. So a copy of the class recording will be uploaded on YouTube. No? So again, ano lang, basa-basa lang tayo article parate. Ha? Para ma-apply natin yung mga ideas na nasishare natin sa class sa ano, real world. Okay. So I'll see you again next week. No? Stay safe and bye-bye. No? If you want a copy of the video, this will be uploaded sa YouTube. Okay, bye-bye po, and ingat. Thank you, Thank you sir. Hey, mm -hmm. by the way, so 